this is obviously Donald J. Parker was like, well, I, c- I can get on the on the Google and find out what the football talk would be. There you are, Clemson. Yeah, yeah. And they've got a, one second, let me write this down. Fresh man. <laughs> oh, I hope he's okay. <laughs> Quarter back must be Jewish. Oh, he's a red shirt. I thought they weren't allowed to say that anymore. Okay, red, red shirting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got no that one. <laughs> Eli has no fucking idea right, what that right, joke's yeah, about. Like, oh, it's not a God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because that's how the intro goes. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath will be unable to join us this week because apparently the the three of us will never be on the show together again all at the same time. But sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm fucking amazing, Noah. Oh, okay, well, I'm going to take you down a fucking peg then, because if this was all good for you, then it was at my expense. But not just my expense. We have a guest masochist with us this week. Thomas Smith is the co-host of Opening Arguments, Serious Inquiries Only, and Philosophers in Space, and he's also really, really pissed at us right now. Thomas, welcome back. Hi. <laughs> You ever almost get in a car crash that's your fault with someone and then afterwards you're trying to make small talk? That's what this podcast with Thomas should be. <laughs> oh, that 16-wheeler did not stop, huh? Not, well, I thought for sure. <laughs> you said you needed yeah, you, to pee? But you were, they, they, <laughs> see, they were on the their side of the road, though, Eli. Yeah, they were, in this analogy. They, yes. There's, yeah. And Eli we were, was We were not. not on our side of the road. Yeah. yeah that's the thing. So why would why would he have stopped? Why would he have stopped? <laughs> He's just driving. He's just driving on his side. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of which, Thomas, uh, which lane are we in today? <laughs> well, we watched a terrorist training video that I assume <laughs> the FBI let you borrow or something. I don't know if <laughs> you guys are working with them or what, but it's called Hearts Are Trump. And it follows several characters who go from not supporting Trump to Stealing Nancy Pelosi's lectern guess, <laughs> the, by the end of the movie. Yep. They are all in. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you're tired of the classic movie trope of conservative old timers who just don't understand the kids these days, and you'd like <laughs> to see a movie from their perspective, <laughs> you will love this. It's the first three-fourths of Footloose from John Lithgow's point of yep. view. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. It's it's Donald James Parker. It's Gramps. We're going back. To the, I can't <laughs> tell you which is more depressing to me. The fact that we have now watched six of Donald James Parker's movies. Oh, my God. Or the fact that there are still eight that we haven't watched. <laughs> and he's still making them. He's still making them. Oh, you know, right. This one came out in October. Yeah. And, and very obviously didn't come out in November. We'll get there. Well. When your movies are just improvised, here's the best of what I can recall from a Facebook argument I once had <laughs> with a relative. You're able to actually pump them out pretty you fast. Turn them right not... the fuck out. Yeah, this was all done last year. All of these. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they were able to make this in real time, like just before the election and turn it around and I don't know, seven days or so. Well, <laughs> if, if they were making it as we were watching it, I wouldn't have been all that surprised. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I noticed it didn't have an ending time in the stream thing. It just was like, keep, you know, it was just going. And then eventually they stopped streaming it to us. I think that's how it works. <laughs> right. All right. And by the way, so for the record, for listeners at home who don't recognize the name Donald James Parker or even Gramps, the other movies that he was in that we've done are Right to Believe, Gramps Goes to College, the Unexpected Bar Mitzvah, Love, it. Love Waits, and One More Round. That could literally be a list of the worst movies we've ever watched, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. So, Did I do Unexpected Bar Mitzvah or did I just listen to you guys do that? <laughs> I, I don't. I feel like did you I did do any one of, the, of those know. with us. I, I don't know if it was that one, but yeah. Okay. I think you've seen him before. I think you've, you've encountered Gramps before. I've noticed with my therapist that sometimes what I do to cope <laughs> with this is I... <laughs> <laughs> just block them out I, all together. Yeah, I just I just make my own reality in which this was all a dream and I didn't actually <laughs> have to do this. So forgive me if I don't remember no. which Gramps movie I fucking watched. <laughs> so 
Uh, speaking of which, it's time for the best worst, and I'm going to start this one out because this is the obvious one here. Best worst, three months of aging. <laughs> right, because, okay, so we'll talk about it, obviously, when we get into the movie, but over and over and again in this movie, that's like, well, it's not us that's starting riots and breaking windows and things over and <laughs> over in this movie. I haven't seen anything age this bad this fast since that Nazi dude chose poorly. <laughs> oh, it's fucking fantastic. It is prophetic in its ironic yes. asshole. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they might as well ended every scene with a blank screen and then like the narrator like starting to say and they did, you know, yeah, like, right. yes, off. Exactly. like might as well. They would go on to break windows <laughs> and start riots. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to go with best, 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 best. <laughs> These people are sad now. Super uh, sad. Yes. Every uh. time I hated this movie, which was every second of every minute of this movie, <laughs> I got to remind myself how sad and powerless every single uh. person associated with this fucking movie is. How their month and year is ruined. They're just every day they wake up. Oh, and I, I get a big boner from it. Oh, I, nothing yeah. makes me harder than Donald James Parker's <laughs> oh, sadness. Yeah, but fully half of them can't fly anymore. It's just <laughs> lovely. <laughs> My best worst is, you know, I know this applies to so many of the movies that, that I've done on here and that you guys do where they do the apologetic argument terribly and then the other, you know, like the, the atheist is always represented in the dumbest way. Like, but I thought Jesus wasn't Lord or something, yeah. you know, like something like that. <laughs> yeah. It's the best words that, but like the problem, I didn't realize how lucky we had it when it was just about some obscure Jesus-y bullshit that, you know, maybe you don't, maybe you guys know, but like I'm not going to encounter in my everyday life. This is that, but with arguments I encounter every fucking day, and it's a dumbed down version of them delivered in the worst acting way in the world. I will tell you, this is a true story. I was watching this. I had to watch this in halves. I couldn't do it all at once. I watched the <laughs> first half and then I had to take a break. I listened to a pod, I turned it on, on a podcast in between that. And for the first 10 minutes of this podcast, I thought the people were fake in the podcast. Like the movie <laughs> is so fake with the arguments that I, my brain was like, oh, so he, this person's just saying this in a fake like devil's advocate way. Of, like I, I genuinely, it was, I, I knew what it was like to think everybody's lizards. It was like that for, for a second. I thought like, well, nobody really means anything they say. Cause these actors are so bad saying the worst arguments. I almost lost my mind because of this movie. Oh. So that's, um, that's how I'm doing everybody. Yes. That's worst. That is, is what I'm saying. That's worse. Whatever that is. It's a good thing. We don't have a word for that. Actually. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, we have a two hour all caps, Facebook screen to break down. So we're going to need a break first, but we're going to be back in a minute with all the, and another things that are hearts are Trump. I don't know. 33 marshmallows. That's physically impossible i'm telling you man they shrink when you get them in there hey guys you ready to record oh my jesus dude thomas man are, are you okay oh what this yeah uh yeah i guess the last few years have made me a little tense this is this is how i walk now are, are those your butt muscles yeah they've they've been like that since the Mueller report thomas have, have you thought about getting a theragun what's a theragun Theragun is the handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tensions using a scientifically calibrated combo of depth, speed, and power. And it's as quiet as an electric toothbrush. Yeah, and the Gen 4 Theragun doesn't just feel good. It gets to the source of the pain by releasing tension using Theragun's signature percussive therapy, which goes 60% deeper than just vibration alone. Wow, that does sound nice. Yeah, it is. Whether you treat your muscle tension from working out, an injury, or... Whatever is happening to your shoulder right there that doesn't seem physically possible. There's no substitute for the Theragun Gen 4. So do you guys have them? Oh, you bet we do. Theragun sent us some to try, and they received the highest honor any of our sponsors ever receive. What's that? Our wives steal them. Yeah, they stole them. Oh, right. But they feel amazing. Yeah, total tension blaster. Really good. And best of all, you can try the Theragun for 30 days, starting at only $199. Go to theragun.com slash awful right now and get your Gen 4 Theragun today. 
That's Theragun.com slash awful. Theragun.com slash awful. All right, guys, I'm sold. Now let's get to this recording. Okay. Uh, question, can you physically sit in a chair right now? I'm going to need three chairs and some duct tape, but yeah. Do you want me to try to... Don't touch. Okay. okay. All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to the first writer's meeting for Hearts Are Trump. And by everyone, I mean me, Donald James Parker. Anyway, any ideas? Me. Yes, I saw a YouTube video today that really blew my noodle. Did you? Sure did. Gonna make a movie about it, are you? Yep. I'll uh, need some young people from my church to repeat my great ideas, of course. Good, we can do that. And then I'll need to reenact all the conversations I had with my wife about the YouTube video I saw. And, uh... Ooh, I guess I'll get a black guy to tell me about how Donald Trump isn't racist. And then, well, and then I'll give one or two more speeches. Just, you know, about whatever I want randomly inserted into a film that otherwise has nothing to do with my character. That sounds good to me, Donald. Yep. Three cheers for Donald. Great idea, Donald. Donald earned a fig Newton. Mm, figgy. So figgy. Now, Donald, don't get lost in the sins of the flesh with that fig Newton you hear. Oh, I hear you, Donald. I do hear you. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on the title screen that would have looked cheap and shitty in 1987. <laughs> 1995 Windows Solitaire is like, come on, guys, little effort. Little right. effort. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And we're going to open up on, like, I don't know, three or four minutes of standing 25 feet away from a TV, watching oh a God. guy tell us about the dream he had about Jesus. Who do we fuck, Noah? Who do we fuck? <laughs> <laughs> or actually, sorry, I'm, I wrote that note before I fully realized what we were watching. What we're actually watching is a guy talk about the five hours he spent in heaven talking to Jesus, specifically about the 2020 election. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did the movie start? Did it start? I, this is my note for like five minutes. I was like, is this the, did I, am I watching someone watch the movie? Is this the movie? <laughs> Which is. This is a really cheap way to pirate this thing. I, you, you guys... And by the way, speaking of that, there are, so we are watching people watch TV. Yes. Kind of. Mm -hmm. And there, the TV, there are jump cuts <laughs> in the TV, which means they did edits to the video of the video. <laughs> yeah. they, they could have just edited the video before putting it on the TV and yes. then filming that. But they did it. They, they, they edited it after. I, the oh whole TV God. moves for him. It's amazing. Ugh. Well, I, I got to tell you, the third time that they cut to Donald James Parker and the old lady that's supposed to be his wife, like looking slack jawed at one another. Yeah. I fucking lost it. They just kept playing it over and over yeah. again. <laughs> Gun to my head, I couldn't tell you. Like, my, I wrote these notes as I was going through. Gun to my head, I don't know if they're supposed to think this guy is fucking nuts or if they love him. Yep. <laughs> I didn't know. It was like, oh, are they the characters that, like, are not believing this? Or are they, like, loving it? I, I fucking don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. And by the way, I noticed this right away. And this, like, I want to point this out because this bothered me the entire movie. I had to rent this thing on Vimeo. And the entire time on the top right, there's a little icon that says you rented this. And it looks oh so my, oh, accusatory wow. and mad at me. <laughs> it's like a scarlet letter or something. Frowny like, face emoji in the corner. We will always know. That's seriously like a like a telltale heart. Like yes. I, I, I genuinely <laughs> felt morally. I'm still beating myself up about the three ninety nine that I gave these people. Like oh, I'm, yeah. I'm try, I'm try, I'm, I've been forming schemes. Like, can I steal three ninety nine back from them? So Somehow, Donald like, can James I, Parker. Can I beat three ninety nine <laughs> out of them? <laughs> can I go hold him up, but just be like, I just want exactly three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what you have on. I you. will That's give you I change. Yeah, I brought change. We should clarify what this is because it's so fucking beautiful and important. Because Donald James Parker, creator of the unexpected bar mitzvah and Gramps goes to college, saw. Kevin Zadai, who I will talk about in a second, appear on Sid Roth's YouTube show, It's Supernatural, <laughs> and was so moved by both Kevin Zadai and what he had to say that he made a two hour long movie about it. Uh, well, no, he made a two hour long movie about his dumbass granddaughter not listening to him when he told her to watch it. <laughs> you know what? That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> it's tangentially related. So you might be thinking, Eli, who's Kevin Zadai? I'm glad you asked, podcast listener. 
Kevin Zadai claims with very little evidence that he died during a routine dental procedure. <laughs> and while he was dead, he went to heaven and spent five hours in heaven with Jesus. And Jesus taught him to play the <laughs> soprano saxophone. Yes. <laughs> That's who <laughs> That's the whole inspired story. this movie. <laughs> and by the way, we'll put the link in the show notes. If you go to the Sid Roth show where he makes this appearance, the reason why there's a big old fucking edit is because there is a three minute and 14 second long infomercial for the $35 you can pay to Sid Roth for Kevin Zidai's book audio tapes, and most importantly, music CD of the music he learned from Jesus while he was dead. And in that infomercial, they claim that if you listen to that CD, you will be able to communicate with the angel. You have to click the link in the show notes. Oh, Jesus I, honestly, we could do an entire God Awful movies on the infomercial in the middle of this clip. <laughs> I just got to hand it to him. Like, you know, people are always trying to sell you on their shitty band, but like he really took yeah. that to the next level. <laughs> right? That's a way to get your goddamn demo CD in their hands. <laughs> so, yeah, so they watch this. They're entirely convinced, right? So grandma picks up her cell phone and dials it in the least cell phone way possible without using a rotary dial. <laughs> yeah, I wrote down, I'm calling the TV. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know what she was doing. Well, yeah, and and so she's calling her granddaughter, who apparently she doesn't have saved in the phone. She dials a ten digit goddamn number on her phone. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, "Hey, I you have to watch this terrible Jesus dream video that I just saw about the dental soprano saxophone guy." What do you mean, <laughs> fuck me? How how would I even fuck my own face? It doesn't make sense. And the dialing sound effect is done with the same precision that we've come to expect from this movie already, where she's just doing her finger on the phone. It's like... <laughs> 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 sounds like R2-D2. That might have been some of Kevin Sedai's soprano saxophone jazz leaking through into the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, never Why is soprano saxophone? Why is Jesus teaching soprano... Why is you, if you're going to sell us on a Jesus taught you to play something, why not like a harp or a, I don't know, a lute, like something Jesus-y? Like, t <laughs> oh, Jesus. But yeah, as Noah mentioned, she calls the grand. It's their movie. I know I say that a lot, but I will say it even more. <laughs> this. In her own movie, she's like, honey, will you watch this television me and your grandpa saw? No? What about for some cinnamon rolls? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so they bribe granddaughter into watching the video. That'll come back. But first we have to watch the two of them have this bizarre conversation that starts with like uh. Donald James Parker said, you know, there was this Abraham Lincoln meme that oh, I saw oh on God. Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so perfect. I wrote that down because I, I'm still in the process again because I blocked these things out and I don't remember any of this. <laughs> I'm hoping this is a parody. Like I'm always, I'm rooting for this to be a perfect, <laughs> amazing parody. And if it is, this is one of the greatest jokes ever conceived of. The guy who I guess wrote this movie, you're telling me, says, <laughs> you know, I just recently saw a paraphrasing of an Abraham Lincoln quote that went something like this. Yeah. <laughs> so he's paraphrasing a paraphrasing of an Abraham Lincoln quote. In his own movie. It's, uh, uh. <laughs> really hedging his bets there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. And then he wrote his wife a line to say, well, what a deep and close to what Abraham Lincoln probably said thing to say. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's We're watching the fucking Facebook will take ownership of all your videos at midnight movie. That's what I that, like her to me. <laughs> and then there's this great moment where the where the grandma, she's going to throw out a little analogy here. She's like, you know, Donald Trump is like George Bailey. And he's the only thing keeping America from turning from Bedford Falls to Pottersville. Uh, Just a bunch of crickets come in and they go like, now yeah. is it now for us? <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then Donald James Parker turns to the wife and goes, you know, that's not a bad analogy that I wrote for you to say in this movie. <laughs> and then for me to agree with, <laughs> I want the confidence of Donald James Parker just for a day. <laughs> Fuck Felix Felicia's potion. I just want to be as confident as Donald James Parker. <laughs> Parker writing about himself for himself. 
I'm surprised you haven't worked this into a skit where like I'm saying like God Eli your your penis is so big it's so <laughs> yeah, big, incredibly right. large that's a great point Thomas <laughs> is it you ever find it's too big Eli do you ever you know like too unwieldy <laughs> so yeah they're talking about basically they're talking about all the dangers that the Democrats will bring if they win the election of course this was all made to try to sway people into the Donald Trump category because so many undecided voters would be watching it I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And one of the lines here, Donald James Parker says, yeah, but if we talk about this, this being, you know, the guy who died, spent five hours learning, you know, getting saxophone lessons from Jesus. If we talk about this, people will call us insane. And I'm like, nailed it. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're only five minutes in and you got one right, man. I just want to point out how much you have to already know to know what the fuck is supposed to be happening in this movie. Because <laughs> what I saw when they when we watch someone watch TV, which was just an interview on someone else's show, which was the first 10 minutes of the movie. What all he said, like I was trying to figure out what was supposed to have swayed them, you know, like what's the message? Yeah. And it's just the guy was like, I think China's gonna take over us. Like that's it. Like there's not <laughs> nothing. There's nothing there. And then we're to believe that they were so compelled by this. They're so like, Get the granddaughter on the phone. We've yep. started a revolution here. Yeah. Honey, get out the secret cinnamon roll recipe. This is a make or break moment for our country's history. And by the way, right after he says they are going to call us crazy, here is his exact line. Oh, please. The enemy of our souls is the master of deception. Yes. Yeah. If you were talking about Satan, Prince of Darkness, that's a crazy thing to say. <laughs> if I was having a conversation about the mythical Satan with a Christian and I was like, and would you say he's the enemy of your soul and the master of deception? They'd be like, oh, no, man, that's a villain in a cartoon you watch. Please don't eat so much acid before you come see me. <laughs> Yeah, follow up the they're going to think we're crazy line with a reference to the goat monster that's trying to trick you into masturbating. Well done. And then we go Godwin for the first time. They point out that if Biden voters were in charge back in 41, the Nazis totally would have won. <laughs> I know I always have notes like this when I do this show, but never have they come this early. Like, ne I'm telling you, never have my I quit. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> like, I'll send you screenshots. I just type. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. I quit. First scene. First yeah. scene. We're not even. Yep. God. Oh, this was a brutal, brutal watch. It was so fucking hard. And then, okay, so then they have a conversation. And please feel free to correct me if you don't think I'm selling this correctly on whether or not it's time to take up arms if Biden wins. <laughs> And the answer, spoiler alert, is not no. No, <laughs> it's definitely maybe. <laughs> yeah. They, and they, I love it because they simultaneously are ready to take up arms all of a sudden because one guy said China. Like that was all it was. <laughs> yep. But also he, he also tries later on in the movie, he tries to play it like, you know, four years ago, I didn't know who was what in the election. Like, I just thought everyone was a good person. <laughs> like, which is it? Yeah, really? You, well, okay. Yeah. And I love that Donald J. Parker has to fucking hedge his bets and admit that he's a pussy who makes movie love letters to himself about himself. <laughs> he turns to the wife and he's like, you know, I'm a lover, not a fighter. And I wrote in my notes, that's right, everyone. Donald J. Parker fucks and he wants you to know it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we cut to granddaughter. So granddaughter and mom are there and they're talking to Donald James Parker and granny. Yeah. And if you're wondering how it's going, grandma's first line in this scene is just because someone is paranoid doesn't mean that someone isn't out to get them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And because like the granddaughter and they're, they're saying stuff like, oh, you, you, these conspiracy theories. And I, I'm writing down again in all caps. I don't know what happened, but this entire note section <laughs> is all caps. I know what happened. It's not even a conspiracy theory. <laughs> tell me what the theory is. Right. They didn't tell me anything. Right. They just they said have. a guy was like, I died in China. And that was, and I'm like, what is the, con what? How, can you let me in on the movie? Like, I would love, it would be a, it would be a compliment to call what you're saying a conspiracy yes. theory. That would be an upgrade. Yep. I don't know what the fuck this is. It doesn't even rise to the level of conspiracy It, it really is theory. the Republican Party not even bothering to put out a platform in movie form. It really is. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Well done. 
so, but the grandma decides to come to the defense of the guy who got his saxophone lessons from Jesus. And she says, did you notice the way that he was laughing and smiling? Insane <laughs> yeah. people don't laugh and smile. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the last time in this movie. This is, this is the defense. Oh my God. It's so eye opening. This is the defense. Whenever somebody questions like, wow, you sound like a fucking nut job. The protagonist will be like, yeah, but did you see that they were a good speaker? And yes. <laughs> they were articulate. You're like, what the? F right. <laughs> That's the best you can do in your movie? That's the best you can do? <laughs> and then there's this great moment where we see how, like, what level of apologetics we're going to get. Because, like, the granddaughter says, okay, grandma, if this is so important, why doesn't your omnipotent God take care of it? Why is he, like, <laughs> making you talk me into it? And she's like, well, why didn't God kill Hitler, honey? Like, well, yeah, there's another great way your worldview falls apart. I guess we didn't need this conversation at all. What was your point, Grandma? Grandma, <laughs> do you think Joe Biden is Hitler? No, I just think God doesn't like him the way God didn't like Hitler. <laughs> Literally, now I'm going to say the words freedom isn't free because I'm an idiot. <laughs> oh, We got 90 Hitler references, Holocaust references. And one of them was, I think the granddaughter says like, oh, you just been watching too much Fox News. And then the grandma or somebody, the grandpa. Well, at a certain point during this scene, all of a sudden, the grandpa is there. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? <laughs> he, he appears like the ghost of Christmas past. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It just appears. And Lydia watched maybe the first 10 minutes of this before. I think she left me. I actually haven't heard from her since. <laughs> but this was one of the parts she saw and was like, where did he come from? Oh, was it was so the movie creepy. This he, just, he probably was like manning the camera for the first part or something. And oh, then like, you're right. In the scene. But anyway, <laughs> she says like, well, how would you know what's on Fox News? You refuse to watch it. And then, you know, they get in an argument about like, well, Fox News is crazy. And she says, well, I think that about CNN. And then the mom tries to take the like centrist, like, well, I think they're both crazy and I just want to ignore them. And then the grandma, I wish I were making this up. She says like that worked out for the Jews in the 40s or whatever. Yes. And yes. Then, like the Jews ignored CNN and Fox News. That was the problem. <laughs> the Jews ignored two sources of cable news in the 40s. That's, That's what went wrong. Really? Her, her actual line is, quote, that worked really well for the Jews while Hitler was doing his thing. Yeah. Was her fucking line. And by the way, that is, I it, it, by my count, the fifth Godwin in the first 10 minutes of the film. Yes. Yes. Woo. Is it the last? No. No, no. no. I think we keep that batting average <laughs> I up. I don't know why I said that. I, I have no idea why I said that. <laughs> All right. So you're probably thinking to yourself, like, well, I'd love to hear these people's thoughts on Black Lives Matter protests. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, I will pay you for your notes during this section of the movie. Oh, my God. It was just all caps kind of repeating what they said. At certain point, they're like, follow the money. The grandpa dude says like, well, follow the money. And then the in one of the few lines in the movie that isn't totally fucking stupid, the granddaughter's like, who's making money from the protests? What are you talking about? And then the guy <laughs> says, unless they've been hired by someone to protest. Yes, unless they're the paid rabble. Rousers. And you're like, does that answer the question of who's <laughs> making money? Like, Where's the money making part of it? I get what you're yes, saying. Like, right. Someone's for where? Uh, oh well, and then grandma, like grandma somehow manages to make it even worse. She says, why are there no protests to end sex trafficking? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, this is my favorite line of grandma's in the entire movie. She's talking about Black Lives Matter. And this is what she says. People are mad about slavery, but not about literal exact quote. People being enslaved to provide sex toys for perverts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Every line Donald James Parker writes is like close. It's, it's the lizard people English. You know, it's not yeah, quite I, That one was so bad. I almost detected a look from Donald J. Whatever of like, I didn't write that. Yeah, that was never, uh, that. <laughs> She improvised that one. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely all her on that one. Oh, my God. And then and then she says, and why are there no protests against all the black babies that die in abortions? Uh, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> where are all the protests against abortion? We don't yeah. have any of those. Nope. Jesus. Too easy to get an abortion in this country. Nobody uh, <laughs> does anything. You walk right in and yeah, it's greeted as a liberator. I don't know. Yeah. 
All right. So now we, we have a, another character to meet. We have to meet granddaughter's dad, who I just we saw this character. And I'm like, well, there's an actor that beats his wife. I mean, I don't know for <laughs> sure, but that's an actor that beats his wife. It's okay. a good bet. It's a good bet. Yep. Well, and that, that's the character they give him, too. Right. She walks in and he's like, make me something to eat. And she's like, fuck yeah. you. And the scene ends. <laughs> so you're saying it's the role he was born to play. Yeah, basically. exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. All right, so granddaughter goes to hang out with her evil socialist Biden voter friends, and this is when we're going to meet Troy, the Trump supporter love interest for her. <laughs> this is also where I texted Eli and Thomas and said, hey, let me know when you're done watching this so I can report it to Vimeo for the anti-mask bullshit. Oh, yeah. Yup. Because oh, the first thing they talk about when Troy shows up is he's like... <laughs> You guys are wearing masks, huh? And she's like, yeah, Abby really cares about masks. And he's like, yeah, I, I guess I would care about masks, except, um, you know, they don't work. You know, the virus of COVID-19 is way smaller than the holes in a mask. And she was like, it's crazy, Troy, that you know something that all of medicine doesn't. Yep. That's fucking amazing. You must have watched a lot of YouTube videos, huh, Troy? <laughs> Jesus. But they can't even, by the way, when they do that scene, Abby, if that is her name, is not wearing her mask. Nope. So, like, they can't even portray that part, right? Like, that she cares about masks and Black Lives Matter and all that. She's like, Abby really cares about masks. You know, pan over to the mask sitting in, like, a fucking garbage can. Next <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, using exactly. <laughs> so, picking up dog shit with it and throwing it away <laughs> yeah. or something, Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So they do some anti-mask jokes. And uh, we should point out, too, that like these are supposed to be like college kids, right? Oh. Yeah. The granddaughter, Abby, she's like 32. One of the Troy is like, <laughs> I don't know, he could pull off college age. The buddy that he's with is like 51. 55. It's yeah. fucking yeah. great. It's hilarious. And it doesn't help that, like, my note was like, hey, some joggers from the 90s. Like, it doesn't help <laughs> that all their fashion is... 30 years old, like ugh. they come in with a, hey, fellow youths. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to turn the park bench around backwards so he can sit on it. <laughs> so, yeah, so the, so the two friends wander off and leave Abby and Troy together, right? So that they can have a meet cute about how he really gets Donald Trump and old folks and how America used to be great. And she doesn't. Oh, this. This conversation is so fucking amazing. Here's <laughs> yeah. here's the steps this conversation takes, podcast listener, with no gaps. Do you ever fight with your parents? No, I honor and respect my elders. Are your grandparents cool? They are wild with anger at the thought of trans people. <laughs> 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 yep. That's the conversation. It literally is. What are your grandparents like? They hate the trans. <laughs> yeah. Here's what I wanted to pick up from this, which is they get into that argument. You're right. The harsh transition to anti-trans stuff. And so the guy who is like a gay, also homophobic Andy Samberg character, it's a, like a, <laughs> it would be pretty offensive, honestly, if he did it, but it's kind of, that's what he looks like. Mm -hmm. And he rattles off these arguments. He's like, they're letting kids change their sex when they're seven. And then he asks, he, goes, he says this, what were your hopes and dreams when you were seven to the girl? And she rattles off a list of things, every single one of which would have been better than being in this movie. She <laughs> them, it's like you might as well be in a snuff film and say, man, how dumb were you when you were seven? She's like, yeah, I wanted to be like an archaeologist. <laughs> Idiot. What a dumb seven-year-old. Anyway, let's proceed with this snuff film. <laughs> now you know better, don't you? Well, he's he's like talking about the push to make kids experiment with homosexuality at just seven and eight years old. I'm like, yeah, man, that's just a thing preachers do. We're all against that. <laughs> that was just you, man. And for the last time, you need to report that gym teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and then he says, I don't know. I think I was born late. I should have been around in the 1950s. You know. Pre-civil rights. Yep. If someone says they belonged in a generation pre-civil rights, they're a racist and they don't belong <laughs> in any generation. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. But she's fascinated and, and she'd like to learn more about the lizard people. So the two of them are going to go on a date. <laughs> 
And so now Donald James Parker, he like butts his way back into the movie, like Tom cutting into a conversation at a conference or something. And he's decided that he's going to call together a meeting of all the city's pastors so that they can discuss how they should all support Trump. First Amendment be damned. Oh, it's so good because I guess his pastor, unless Donald James Parker is his own pastor, which I would be zero yeah. percent surprised yeah. about. <laughs> He's supposed to give a moving speech, but it's Donald James Parker's movie, damn it. So he gets up meaning nothing and as a character with no interest. And he's just like, my turn to talk now. <laughs> Property was destroyed. <laughs> yeah. What I love about this is that their movie, they're advocating to commit crimes. Like they're literally, hey, all you pastors, Let's go advocate for who to vote for in your churches. Yeah. The one thing we're not supposed to do, but churches are never punished, so we do it anyway. They don't give a fuck. They don't even care. They're making a movie about how they should all break the law and violate their fucking 501c whatever thingy. Uh, and it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. No, and, and the movie is about what a bunch of pussies the pastors who don't do that are. I just want to note that I hope everyone in this small huddled gathering of pastors died of COVID. I, well, I actively, oh, it was such good a news, bad, Thomas, because white <laughs> group of maskless people. And we should point that out that like throughout this entire movie, virtually everyone will be maskless. This was all made in like September of last year. Yeah, except for one guy what? who yes! sometimes wears a mask, kind of. Pumpkin it's like shirt. They were, they're like, Giant well, should we cover? Pumpkin shirt, yes. <laughs> yeah, should we cover our bases in case there are some, you know, fucking fundamentalist criminal terrorists that we're recruiting who might also kind of like masks? Yeah, sure. Why don't you wear one for a quarter of two scenes? Yeah. Inexplicably. And they're like, that covers it. I know this was an accident, but this guy is in multiple scenes, either wearing or not wearing a mask. And he's only ever wearing a mask when a person of color is talking to the group. <laughs> so the subplot that I had going was this guy was like, oh, black guy, black guy. Okay. <laughs> oh, <Go Jesus>. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So speaking of which, yeah. So they're all leaving the meeting and black preacher stays behind mm -hmm. to I think explained to them that he doesn't want to support a racist and Donald Trump is a racist, but everything is, first of all, the lines are just insane. And then they dub out half of what he says and they have a white yeah. guy come in and say some shit instead. 100% what actually happens. I need to clarify. We are not exaggerating. The black actor on mic goes, gentlemen, thank you for having me, but, and then it switches to a guy going, <laughs> I appreciate your opinion, dog, but yes, thank you for having me. I'm Donald J. And Parker. his mouth is still moving <laughs> differently from that. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then it get, it cuts back to it. And, and the, the, there's no effort to, made to make sure that the voice lines up with the guy's lips moving at all. Nope. And then we cut back long enough for him to say, all right, well, I hope you guys think about that. And they're like, yeah, we sure will. We sure will. Yeah. Here's what I love about this. You fucking idiots are already... It, God, this movie. They're already huddled in a tiny room without masks. So that means you're already on the same dumbass fucking side already. You might as well have filmed a scene at a KKK rally where one guy takes his hood off and is like, guys, I hear your arguments, but I'm just not convinced that the right white race is actually right. the best. Right. I don't believe you. I don't... <laughs> You're already there. I, I I think we know where you stand. Oh, geez. And, and by the way, we should point out that in the course of this scene, we hear all about how you can't trust the Democrats because their protesters started riots and broke windows. Yep. And we hit one person specifically talks about how he's concerned that people who have power will be hesitant to give up that power. <laughs> Again, but they're, they're, they're presenting these as reasons you wouldn't want to let vote for a Democrat mm -hmm. in both instances. Aged like a fine wine. <laughs> <laughs> and also, there's this great moment where there's this not the worst white splaining moment in the movie, but the first real good white splitting moment <laughs> where the white pastor points out to the black pastor that, yes, 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 he's against real racism, but not this silly crap BLM is marching against, right? Mm -hmm. He explains what real racism is to the black man. Finally, someone explained <laughs> it to the black guy. He begins this explanation with the sentence, look, 
you are my black brother. There is <laughs> literally no set of words in the English language that makes sense unless your mom had sex with an African-American, <laughs> the offspring was African-American and you are not, and you are now pointing that out to him for no reason whatsoever. Yeah, or like, and you you just did a 23 in me and like <laughs> knocked on his door and said, look, you're my black brother. That's okay, the you know what? That would be pretty goddamn yeah. awkward. Why would you say black there? <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You know what? It still doesn't work. There is no, no combination of things that makes that sense work <laughs> unless the black guy didn't yet know he's black okay yeah the no, only way. Yep, no, 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 you're, either, you're my black brother yeah, oh really you're the, fir- <laughs> <laughs> you're, the first, you're the for the first time he realized he was black that's the only way it makes sense <laughs> and the pastor in his hand waving about racism he goes god is so sad about racism and and then you realize this actor cannot think of any racism ever in history so he goes Sad about racism, you know, all the whatever you people are bitching about. He didn't like that either. Well, and what's so amazing about this scene is the way that it ends is that the black preacher just leaves. He doesn't say, uh huh. He doesn't agree or anything. He doesn't nod. He just turns away and walks off camera. (laughs) Yep. And then the two white people exchange a look of, Black people, huh? Right. Can what you believe you gonna, what that you we got though? one here? Yeah. Oh, we we tried. We really <laughs> tried, but you know, there's only so much you can do with the. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are just unreasonable. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So speaking of unreasonable, now we're gonna cut back to granddaughter. She's visiting with Granny and Gramps, and she's softening up to their the lizard Jews are coming from my crucifix argument now. Uh, yeah. This is where we get the when was America great again? To which grandma responds, again, real quote, our track record with the Native Americans leaves a lot to be desired. (laughs) (laughs) And the granddaughter at one point goes like, well, why is this all not at all the kind of shit that they say in history class? But the point that Donald James Parker is making here is you don't learn about the truth in history class because your liberal cuck public school history teacher (laughs) curriculum is pushing their agenda to, real quote, remove God from society. That is, in his words, the agenda of historians. The Texas people who called Moses one of the founding fathers (laughs) are trying to remove God (laughs) from society. Jesus, Mm -hmm. my my sister is a historian. Her agenda is getting people to agree on how much rain damage constitutes truly illegible when it comes to Colombian birth (laughs) records, okay? (laughs) Jesus, she doesn't have time to fight God as well. And then granddaughter's going to ask, do you guys literally worship freedom and flags? And their answer will be, yes, I would not say no. It's not no. There was an amazing moment here, too, where he recommends a book for us. He's like, you should read the book, The Long War Against God. And I was like, you know, we were looking for another book to read on scaling. Let me write that (laughs) motherfucker down right there. Yeah, you know you have a good movie when the movie has to start recommending other stuff to do rather than watch the movie. (laughs) (laughs) If nothing I'm saying makes sense. (laughs) Pops up in the middle of Tenet. You know there's the new Star Wars movies? They're not good, but, you know, pew, 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 (laughs) Just saying, if you're lost, you can flip over. (laughs) And then, and then, granddaughter asks, do you mean Mortal Kombat? (laughs) Mortal Kombat, one, is the exact word she uses. And Donald James Parker's answer is, maybe. I sure hope not. It's not no. Yes, once again, not no. (laughs) Yeah. Guys, be honest. Do you think I could convince Donald James Parker to fight me? <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> guarantee that you could convince Donald James Parker to fight me. Look, I know they're still making Mortal Kombats. I know that. But <laughs> we have to all agree that this is just Donald, whatever James, whatever his name is, like him thinking it's still 1993, right? Like, Yeah. Oh, yeah. He thinks this is a good reference for the granddaughter to make. Oh, yeah, exactly. Or something, Isn't or, that what the young kids are into these days? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We have earned at least half a dozen breaks at this point. So we're going to take one of them, but we're going to be back soon with even more Hearts Are Trump. So he exploded with laughter. Yeah, it takes him like a week and a half to reform when it happens. 
Like a T-1000? Exactly. Yeah, but with scotch instead of the silvery metal stuff. Huh. Good evening, gentlemen. Table for two. Yes, under Smoznik, please. Weird that you did that with our names. Are, are you sure this is safe? Oh, eating at a restaurant? No. No, I am not. Uh, would the gentleman care for an oxygen tank? Oh, yes, please. T-Dog, want an oxygen tank? Saw me? Uh, I'm good, Eli. If, if you want delicious fresh cooked meals, why don't you just try HelloFresh? I'm sorry, what's HelloFresh? It's America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in about 30 minutes or less. 30 minutes or less? Why, it, it takes longer than that to go through our decontamination chamber. It's true. It does. But Thomas, for the sake of this ad, I like all kinds of food. Don't really want to be stuck with the same old, same old, you know? Well, then you're in luck. HelloFresh offers 23 plus recipes each week featuring a range of flavors, cuisines, and ingredients so you'll never get bored. Eating healthier has never been easier with low-cal, carb-smart, vegetarian, and pescatarian options every week. And no matter what you choose, every single recipe is packed with fresh produce sourced directly from farmers. Wow, that sounds great. Hey, Waiter guy, where do you guys get your produce? Uh, we grow them on our chef's grave. Intense. Intense. But Thomas, what if I don't have time to cook? But you do have time to decontaminate. In the chamber, yeah. Well, then you might want to try HelloFresh's Easy Eats offering. It has tons of quick and easy meal solutions like oven-ready and 10 to 20-minute meals, perfect for your busy schedule. Yeah, HelloFresh actually sent us a trial box, and not only were the recipes delicious, each meal had its own bag and unpacks in seconds, so it made meal planning for the week a breeze. Sounds like it. All right, Thomas, I'm sold. How do I sign up? Go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful10 and use code Awful10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. HelloFresh.com Awful10 and use code Awful10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping? That's right. All right. Well, let's get decontaminated, huh? You, you guys want to hold your breath? Or? Oh, yeah. For 30 minutes? Yep. I don't think I can do that. Yeah, I told you to go for the oxygen tank. So tell us about this boy of yours. Well, his name is Troy. Is he dreamy? Grandma, behave! You know, it's probably going to be a race war. So, where did you meet him? Uh, at the park. He's actually a friend. You know, only of those who bear the holy armor will uh, fight off the devil's hordes. Camberley's. He's the Camberley's friend. Oh, that's nice. What's she up to these days? Well, it's actually pretty cool. You She's know, lots been, of uh, people think Italians are white, but they're not. They're just swarthy Mediterraneans, a lot of them. You'll find out. We'll all see. She's getting her nursing degree. That's nice. Got to save your poop in jars. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. And in a strange nod of self-awareness, we're going to rejoin this action in a bathroom. We're going to meet a new character. This is Desmond. And we're going to meet him as he listens to the Antifa subversives talking about how they're going to like cause some violence at the upcoming Black Lives Matter protest. How they are going to use the weapons offered to them by the Chinese government to kill a Christian biker gang coming into town. Yes, yes, that's exactly the plot point that we're going to open up. <laughs> This movie keeps getting crazier. How does it do that? And if you're wondering, hey, are we ever, ever, ever going to come back to this? No. Nope. No, we will not. Well, sort of, we sort of will. And it's honestly the high point of the film, but you won't get to learn about that. Honestly. Also, the, the camera, you know, the film is lucky that these people drank four gallons of Gatorade before this scene because <laughs> they have enough time to just pee for an hour and talk about their secret Chinese Antifa plans and never be done peeing. Well, but here's the thing. They're very clearly not peeing, right? Because when they hear the other character <laughs> yeah. flush the toilet, they yeah. both run off immediately. Their pants are done. <laughs> they were just standing at that. Not even know? any... Not, forget no time to wash your hands. No time to even have had your dick out in the first place. Nope. Like, <laughs> they nope. just run away from the urinal. Yeah. But this character, Desmond, he walks out in his his girlfriend is out there waiting for him and he's like and and he's I we should point out he's an African American character and he says to his girlfriend, I don't want to be here anymore. I just heard Antifa in there planning to murder some motherfuckers. And she's like, Well, sometimes you gotta murder some motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. Come yeah. on. <laughs> don't be a pussy. You need to rise up and kill white people. 
That's what we people say, right? Is a line that Donald James <laughs> Parker wrote for a black woman to say. <laughs> this is the beginning of what will be several hate crimes that I am trying to find oh. a way to report. I don't know who, whom to report them to. And he responds to that. He goes, I thought I knew you, but I'm not here to kill cops or get them fired. <laughs> and what's fucking amazing about that is like, Donald James Parker somewhere underneath the massive like personality disorder and dementia <laughs> knows that like Black Lives Matter hasn't killed a bunch of cops. <laughs> so he had to hedge it in his movie with like, I'm not here to murder cops with ancient Chinese weapons or get their departments defunded and replaced with social services. <laughs> You have to yeah, like right. keep going down or lodge a complaint based on the badge number that I saw. Yeah. Like you just have to keep <laughs> right. down further. <laughs> so, so, but she doesn't want anything to do with it. If he was not willing to kill cops for her, he's not black enough is a line that <laughs> Donald James Parker wrote for a black uh, woman to say. Yeah. The line that like, so, you know, they go their separate ways. And the line that I wrote down is, I'm not driving you home before I've done some protesting. <laughs> so she's like, find your own way home because I came here to protest and do all the thing that I that the author, the writer thinks black people would do and say, <laughs> and I'm not leaving until I've done my protesting. Oh, I'm just, the fact that it didn't have a watermelon reference in this scene is amazing to me. Yeah. Oh, so Desmond wanders off having broken up with his girlfriend now and he runs into his conservative buddy, Troy, the guy, mm. the, the crush, the Donald Trump supporter crush from earlier. And he's like, oh. hey, can you give me a ride home? And he points in the general direction of elsewhere to illustrate the point. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we get what I think is this movie's worst scene. Oh, it, yeah, I think it's you're up right. there. It's up there. It's. If you were to pick one to be the most offensive yeah. and to put into evidence when you're reporting a hate crime, which I am doing, <laughs> it's gonna be the it one will be this one. It would be the one where the black man turns to the white man and starts to see yep. it off by saying, yep. What do you think of Black Lives yep. Matter and Donald Trump? <laughs> yep. Hey, I am I, my struggle here as a black man is that I just haven't heard what a white Christian man thinks. And I just <laughs> so. need please tell me what you think. I don't. I'm lost. I ha I don't know. Please tell me. I don't mean to put a burden on you, but yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> and so and and Troy says and, and Troy like it, to his credit, he's like, well, let me start off by saying I'm a big fan of you people, right? Like, oh so man, <laughs> I think black people are swell. Uh, well, oh, you you'd like me to name something I like about black people? I love how. Christian you were while you were slaves. That's the compliment <laughs> yeah, the I can think of. Continue That's to endorse real. the white man's religion. That That's real. <laughs> this is not a joke that Eli made. This no. is a real. No. This is, and what, what <sighs> is so hard about watching this is that you can tell that this really is this fucking boomer Doing his best. Like, try, I'm, I'm going to reach across the aisle here. Yes, I'm right. going to solve race relations. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Your people made really good slaves and stuck to a religion that is ours. Oh, that's, my. That's, his, that's how he goes that's into it. Okay. Good as he can go. He doesn't even say, I really like your music. Yeah, exactly. Listeners, no. it gets worse. <laughs> it, I, it really gets does. Worse. It gets worse. It gets worse. You go ahead and take a moment and try and guess yeah. how it gets worse from, <laughs> I like that you stayed our religion while you were You guessed slaves. wrong. You, you guessed, guessed wrong. wrong. Whatever. Well, you guessed did, wrong. Did, did you perhaps guess that Troy doesn't really believe in police brutality? <laughs> he asks, he goes, what do you think about police brutality? And Troy goes, well, being a cop is hard. And then there's a pause because that pause should be filled with, so yes, sometimes they get to murder innocent, unarmed people. <laughs> and of course, well, if a black man's already asked what you think about Donald Trump and police brutality, his next question is clearly going to be about his goddamn welfare check. Mm -hmm. uh. I shit you not. Those are the three topics he brings up in that order. He's like, but what about the way that Republicans and Donald Trump are always against welfare for my people? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Troy responds by saying, sometimes I think black people are their own biggest enemy. Yes. <sighs> yes, he gives the wouldn't it be better if black people were just less lazy speech. And then he points out that he can't be racist because he likes 
and these are his goddamn examples, Alan West, Ben Carson, and yep. Candace Owens. <laughs> yep. I think Thomas Saul, Saul or whatever is in there somewhere. Ooh. Yeah. Uh. And I wrote down in my notes, in my funny little comedy notes as a joke, <laughs> I bet he's going to tell you that he loves Uncle Tom next. But that's actually what yes! happens. Yes! Yeah. What actually uh, happens is that the black yes. character goes, people call them Uncle Toms. And Troy, the white character goes, Uncle Tom is a compliment. I stood up and did a lap around my room. I did, <laughs> I did a brief jog oh. around my room. Not since I witnessed live on air Eli having to respond to James Lindsay defending the Disney crows <laughs> from Dumbo <laughs> as actually the people, the, the best characters ever. And yeah, like that since then wow. have I anticipated. <laughs> oh, but reaction. this could not get worse unless Troy then handed the African American a Bible and asked him to read the Slaves Obey Your Masters oh, passage. Oh, my God. <laughs> Which he does. Why did you say it? Why did you have to say it? No, it wouldn't have happened <laughs> if you didn't say it. That's literally what happened. It's, he literally has him read Ephesians 5 through 9, which is the slaves serve your masters because once you're both dead, you're both in heaven. I'm telling you, I don't know. Look, I called Andrew. I do, I'm freaking out during the scene because I'm like, do I have a duty to report this? Like, can you? <laughs> oh. I, I, I think some one of the amendments or the Civil Rights Act <laughs> it means right. we can't just watch this. I do like, are there not laws in this country? You can make this. But Thomas, weren't you paying attention? As Troy pointed out, some slave masters were actually very good to their slaves. Oh, oh my God. I'm not kidding. Yeah. To which the black oh. guy goes, that's a different way of looking at it. <laughs> yep, yep. But I love it too because because fucking the author, the writer, screenwriter is like, well, I better put in a slight counter argument there. <laughs> so it goes, so the black guy goes, well, then sometimes the good master died and then the next master was not as good. Yeah. And you're like, what, what? is what? happening? What's what is this argument? I that, don't know. That's don't on know Andrew order. Jackson. That's not on him. It's, it's oh. Point counterpoint, guys. Point counterpoint. <laughs> point. Some slaves had great lives. Counterpoint. Sometimes the good master died. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then and then Troy Ugh. points out, well, hey, man, if we're not careful, we could all be enslaved by the Chinese and then black and white would be even. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I, I think it's actually further than that. I think he says, look, if we get enslaved by Russia or China, I'll be a good and faithful slave. Oh, that's right. That is the point <laughs> like, he's making. I'll show you how good a slave uh, I can be. <laughs> and so he reads that. He makes him, he forces him in a hostage video to read that Bible <laughs> verse. And I was like, this is worse than my Bible podcast. Where yep. like, somebody had to read this shit. It's even worse. They made the black guy read this. Oh, my God. And then I love the way this all ends, right? Because then Troy starts pointing out that at any minute, Antifa will start murdering people, like lying against the wall and shooting them. To which Desmond says, in clarification, this is the actual quote. I went back three times to make sure I got this exactly right. Quote, so you think the Antifa dudes could just start killing and destroying property who would kill their own members who don't get involved with the killing? Sure seems that way. <laughs> sure seems that way. That's the actual oh. exchange that happens in the film. Look, I, oh. I just, uh, this, I got to take a second to make a broader point. <laughs> Look, I, I know that we all know this, but like, this is why fuck any both sidesy bullshit. Just yes. fuck yes. any both sidesy <laughs> bullshit, right? Because here's the thing. Th even this movie knows when this movie tries to summarize our arguments, it does so fucking horribly. But at least it describes things that we disagree with. So they'll be, so for example, they'll have the character be like, but what about the kids in cages, you know? Mm -hmm. And then they'll have some fucking bullshit disagreement with it. But like, there are kids in cages. <laughs> we all agree that that's a thing. But the movie isn't like, oh no, that doesn't exist. It's a hoax made up by the, no, the movie grants that there are kids in cages, but then is, is okay with it. Yeah. Whereas 
when we're talking about what the right, so that's what the left believes about the right. It's a thing that really happens. It's a real thing that everybody agrees on. When the left, when the right is arguing against the left, it's Antifa is coming to, ins- with the help of Russia, China is going to enslave your family and kill everybody who doesn't kill officer. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? We're, we're not going to let you say Merry Christmas oh, and we're coming yeah. for your guns. And yeah. It's unbelievable. Oh my God. This is what they believe. There's no middle ground between I think there's systematic racism in this country and a goat demon is trying to convince you to jerk <laughs> off. <laughs> oh my god. It it's that this is so hard to watch cuz like these people aren't medically insane or you know like they 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 they're just people. They're just people on the right who support Trump. Yep. And there's a lot of them. They're just people on the right. And their votes mattered. Like their votes were counted. Yeah. So depressing. Uh, Okay. And so, so we go back to Abby and her mom, granddaughter and and mom, and they're going to church together. Right. First, first we have to have dad be an asshole again and tell mom to bring him a beer. She's woman. Right. He hasn't turned Christian yet. So he's an asshole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But then we get this, a great scene. Now this is not the first time in this movie that we've had two characters just sitting in a car because they don't know how to film. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> a moving vehicle conversation. So yep. in what's become to me like the signature shot of a you know, Donald James Parker movie, we watch these two characters sit in a car together for a very long time yep. talking about her new boyfriend. I have a very important question about this scene. None of it mattered to me except for this very first dialogue <laughs> where she's like, was dad charming? And she goes, oh, he was charming. He'd Charm your socks off while your shoes were still on. <laughs> to which the daughter responds, Ew, mom, don't talk about sex. <laughs> yes. What? <laughs> what? Well, because 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 that would be naked ankles. I don't, I don't know. That would definitely be when you're talking to your parents, that's the first assumption you want to make. You want to sexualize something that's not sexual. That's definitely <laughs> Very natural <laughs> character choice. Yeah, but that's how they open this conversation with basically the whole like, was dad always terrible or did he used to be Christian conversation? Yeah, right? yeah. It's it. <laughs> the daughter does have to be like, hey, mom, ah, how do I broach this topic? Was dad ever not a fucking abusive fuck face piece of shit? <laughs> right. Right. She says, doesn't he kind of treat you like a servant? And she's like, do you know that one line about slaves obeying their masters? Oh, just did that last scene. Last scene. <laughs> yeah, okay. I just saw it in the last oh, scene. Oh, my <laughs> okay. And she and the mom is like, well, the Bible says that I'm a fucking servant to that beer guzzling fucking douchebag. So, yeah, I'm happy. I'm good with this arrangement. The Bible tells me so. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Then she blames herself for how abusive and terrible her husband is. Yeah. And God, I li- do you guys just live for the boomer trying to write the 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 millennial dialogue <laughs> oh, or whatever generation she's it. supposed to be? She says so they you know transition to talking about the Troy, just the boomer idea of the perfect man. <laughs> <laughs> right. And yeah. she's like. I've been thinking about the prospects of marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Everything yeah, in, a, sure. in a Donald James Parker movie is lizard English. Yes. <laughs> God. <laughs> right. And so the, finally the mom's like, well, I think I should meet your boyfriend. You should invite him to dinner. And her daughter's like, well, are you sure that dad's not going to beat you? And she's like, you know what? I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to be risk. ever so slight. It's a risk <laughs> yes. we have to take. <laughs> right. Yes, <laughs> Exactly. So it's time for Troy to meet the parents. He's going to start off saying the blessing. I I should point out all these characters join hands in the middle of the pandemic that they're meeting during. Oh, they (laughs) might as well lick their hands and then lick them again after (laughs) they pray. Do the old like making a deal thing where they spit on their hands. hands. Like an old timey cowboy. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, so dad's not too sure about this Troy guy, but then it turns out that he likes college football. So he's not a Democrat. Yeah. Apparently. They bemoan that COVID shut down everything college football, which I think we can agree is the worst part of COVID. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I don't know if there's another one of these things where you just don't know, because when non-humans make a movie, you don't know. Are they trying to play it off? Like Troy is just reading a Wikipedia entry on the dad's favorite football team? Or is that just the acting and dialogue of the movie? I do not know. Oh. He's like, wow, what about their running back, uh, Taylor, from last season? 
<laughs> I'm concerned about the up and coming freshman quarterback who is going. And you're like, is he? So is this a joke? You're supposed or, to, is, supposed to know I, this? I or? don't know. I, yeah. I don't. And I, to this day, I don't know. I'll never know. Well, what's wonderful is this is again great insight into DJP because having watched his movies, we know that Donald J. Parker was a computer programmer until you needed to be smart to do that job. So <laughs> this is obviously Donald J. Parker was like, well, I can, I can get on the on the Google and find out what the football talk would be. There you are. Clemson, yeah, yeah. and they've got a, one second, let me write this down, fresh man. <laughs> oh, I hope he's okay. <laughs> Quarter back, must be Jewish. Oh, he's a red shirt. I thought they weren't allowed to say that anymore. Okay, red, red shirting. <laughs> I got no, that one. <laughs> Eli has no fucking idea right, what that right, joke's yeah, about. Like, oh, is that a <laughs> racial thing? Or? Yeah, and during this scene, we get the dad... Offers him a, after he's finally warmed up to him because of his Wikipedia reading abilities about his Badgers or whatever <laughs> yeah, exactly. team. He offers him a beer and Troy says, no, thank you, Mr. Martin. I never touched the stuff. <laughs> so like, OK, did someone from the silent generation write this? Like, We're not even boomer territory. We're in the, this is like 23 skidoo. I'm going to I never touched the stuff about a beer. Let's what? take the milliner's daughter to the Nickelodeon, guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, you never know who makes that bathtub gin, sir, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> Why, let's go to the Follies after this. What do you say? So. I never touch the stuff about a beer. <laughs> no, but no fucking. If you offered him like ecstasy, yeah. maybe you'd be like, yeah, no, I, I don't touch that stuff. It's a beer. I never touch the stuff. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, and then it, it's going to get worse, y'all, because now it's time for Desmond, Troy's black friend, <laughs> to explain to his people why they should vote for Trump. Yes, this is pastor who disagrees from earlier is his dad. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yes. Wouldn't you know it? Because there's the one black family in this movie. Yeah, I, know, I was going to say, I don't yeah. know if that's intentional or they just didn't have the personnel. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> And a woman who I will never not be convinced was in this movie at gunpoint. Oh, yes. <laughs> this mom character says every, I've been watching a lot of Diamond and Silk and Candace Owens, mom and dad. Oh, have you? Have you, motherfucker? <laughs> or it goes away. And of course, this is a great moment too, right? So the dad says to Desmond, he's like, but son, we're Democrats. Our families always voted for the Democrats. Uh, and Desmond says, but why, dad? And of course, this is Donald James Parker answering it, right? Yeah. He's the one writing it so that the dad's character just says, I don't know, man, because I'm black. <laughs> yeah, he does. He, you think that's not an exaggeration? He says, I don't know, tradition. Yeah. Tradition. <laughs> that's what. Oh, that's my why God. Us that's, Democrats. that's how much he thinks about black people and how they make their political decisions. Right. I don't know. I just think we've always done this. So I'm doing it. That's what he thinks. All right. And now we're going to get to the B plot of this film, which is that Donald James Parker is going to make a YouTube video in his YouTube video. <laughs> I will. My This is where my notes descended into madness, where I was like, I will not watch. A person make a YouTube video <laughs> in a YouTube video. <laughs> a man must have a place That's to go. That's what's gone too far for you. That's the <laughs> step too far. And look, some slaves were nice to their masters or whatever. I can deal with it. I can deal with it. <laughs> I love too how they try to throw the realism in the in the first like false take. Or oh two, yeah, where he, it's like oh, oh 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 I stumbled over my word there. Oh what a dork! And then like take two is just a fifteen minute fucking <laughs> manif manifesto <laughs> exactly. recited word for word. <laughs> oh, I guess that one's good for your blooper reel for my YouTube video, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, everybody I always will be making a blooper deal. <laughs> well, if they get uh, the DVD with the extras, you know, if they want to get yeah. the extras. Yeah. So and I thought I wrote my notes. Oh, my God. The conceit of this movie is what if somebody liked my YouTube video? <laughs> but it's not. No. Right. Like, like I, I was sure that this video he was making was going to go viral because of his folksy wisdom. But it doesn't. Yeah. You would see this super fake fucking like Internet interface with the number like ticking up. Yeah, you know, yeah, you'd yeah. see like their version, the boomer version of that. 
No, no, no. Donald J. Parker cannot imagine a world where we do not make up the vast majority of his viewership. Uh, We will never refer back to this goddamn video. He just makes it and then he puts it on. And and then, of course, the whole message of the video is, look, I'm just a down folksy, homesy guy. I don't know about this or the that, but I've done my own research on the YouTube and Donald Trump is magical, you know. I know this is where he gives us the bullshit of like, well, four years ago, I thought they were all saints and I just assumed they were good people. Yeah. But now and you're like, OK, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I saw the unexpected bar mitzvah, <laughs> dude. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, in fairness to him, I mean, he should write as though no one's ever seen any of his. Well, movies. yeah, no, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Oh, Jesus. At some point in the middle of his YouTube video, he says, and look, I don't think Donald Trump is the final solution. I'm like, mm, let's avoid those two words in our political rhetoric. Huh? Ooh, yeah. Maybe. Yep. Mm. And by the way, when he says that, he's using that in a negative way. Like he wishes Donald Trump would be the final solution. Yes. <laughs> but Donald Trump is not. No, no, we'll need somebody even more Christian for later. Yeah. He also says, you know, with everyone going after him, the Hollywood celebrities and the news, I don't know how he's been able to tolerate that without going postal. And I wrote in my notes, all right, Donald James Parker, how would we define going postal? <laughs> all right. <laughs> Where's the body count out to get? And I love the very end of this scene is so good because he gets done filming it and grandma's like, I would turn off the comments on the YouTube video if I were you, because there are a lot of good reasons to do that. It makes perfect. It's not cowardly at all. Yep. Really? Yep. <laughs> if you think about it. You should, you should turn off the YouTube comments because Eli's going to make fun of you. <laughs> I love the idea, though, that this was the actual, like, the woman, not the actress, who's like, uh, you know, you probably should turn off. The- <laughs> <laughs> like, you might get just, you know, weird stuff about your appearance and definitely about your appearance and, and like <laughs> probably your your appearance and stuff. And I just it's totally you weird. Know, you everybody will turn it off. Pretend yeah. that they're Popeye and they're asking if you like them or Bluto. It's going to be really weird. For <laughs> yeah, you. it's going to be uncomfortable. Yeah. So, yeah. So, OK. And then we get this amazing oh, yeah. scene. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So, okay, so I, I need to contextualize this because this this scene is insane. But for context, and we haven't watched any of these yet, Donald James Parker has made not one, not two, but three movies about sitting his best friend down and telling him he's a piece of shit and he needs to become a Christian. <laughs> he's also written two novelizations of those movies. Yes. <laughs> To say Donald James Parker is obsessed with sitting people in his life down and telling them they suck and need to be more Christian is like saying I have a passing interest in Christian cinema. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. So we cut to the two, presumably watching a football game. They couldn't afford to put football game audio there. They're just sitting really close together on a couch. And Troy says to Abby's dad, to his girlfriend's dad, Hey, can we step outside and talk privately? He's like, we're in a room by ourselves, but it's not more private out there. But okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, and I was anticipating, oh, good. He's just going to ask to marry the daughter. And then he jokes, you're not going to ask to marry my daughter, are you? And I was like, oh, shit, that means that's not what they're going to talk about. (laughs) Fuck, (laughs) what are they going to talk about? What is it? What's in the box? (laughs) It's about Desmond. He smells different, right? Oh, God. Like, not bad, but just I was telling him the other day that know. some of the slave owners were very nice to their slaves. I just told him that. I'm uh, thinking maybe we keep him. Oh, God. <laughs> so, but yeah, uh, but no, he wants to talk to his girlfriend's dad about the fact that he sucks and needs to be yeah. more his religion. Yep. My note is, Gary, you're a piece of shit. Yes. <laughs> That's the conversation. Look, I didn't mean to start a fight by calling you a shitty person. Somehow I thought it would go differently than this. Keep in mind, this guy is supposed to be like 20, right? Like, yeah. Oh, my God. Right. Talking to his fucking future wife, his future father-in-law. Right. And he says, and and one of like the, the veiled threats in this conversation is he's like, hey, look, I'm going to fuck the shit out of your daughter. I'm going to impregnate her. And if you ever want to see your future grandkids, you're going to have to be my religion. As a motherfucker. It's a bold move. <laughs> the actual words he uses are, I want you to be fully functioning. 
To which the dad replies, I'm not disabled. <laughs> yes. What? <laughs> I'll do three push-ups for you right now. <laughs> I used to could do the clappy ones. I can't do that now, but I used to. And what what's so hard about this is like, yeah, Troy is right though. Like this guy is a piece of shit. Oh like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So feeling really, you know, torn during this scene of like, well, You've got a point, but also shut the fuck up. Well, yeah, because Troy's also a terrible fucking person. Every conversation yeah. is about how people should vote for Trump. We need a, a, a sequence of other people telling each of these people <laughs> that they're also a piece of shit. <laughs> like a Russian nesting doll of interventions yeah. or something. Yeah. He goes back in. They're like, Troy, can we speak privately? <laughs> <laughs> it's the dad. The dad comes back inside. Troy, can I speak to you outside? <laughs> You're a piece you of also shit. suck. <laughs> And then, like, a, a bystander is like, hey, everyone in the movie, can I speak to you? <laughs> bring it in. Bring it in. <laughs> can I speak to you in a different Vimeo video? Please. Come over <laughs> they walk over to it. So, okay. So now we cut to that <laughs> that night at dinner, and dad just, like, asks his wife and daughter. He's like, hey, guys, am I, am I a piece of shit? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to which they respond, Mm, yeah, um, they're like silent for like twenty seconds, they are. like a full twenty seconds. But I love it. You're right. The dad's like, "Oh, this is gonna sound crazy. I can't believe I'm asking this." Um, uh, okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, all right. Am I an absolute fucking piece of shit? <laughs> Am I a terrible person that you hate? <laughs> no answer. Right? I mean, that's silly, right? Right? Not right. no, Dad. Isn't Not it? no. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then and then the mom, like, bless her little heart, oh, she goes, "Well, you, God, you." Pay bills well. Uh, you have a I job. I hated this so much. I hated this so much because leave it to Christians. The crux of this scene is the man fucking sucks. We all agree. The whole movie agrees on that. The crux of this scene is how it's the wife's fault that the man is a piece of shit. Right. Yep. She, she should have confronted him before. It's like she says, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that I I didn't let tell you that you were a piece of shit in time to spare your ego for the fact that our our daughter's you know shithead twenty year old boyfriend had to tell you it's my fault. I'm sorry that you've been abusive. Yeah, and that's the good. That's that's like the movie just leaves you with that. Like yeah, that's the good outcome that the wife was sorry for her abuse that she sustained. Right. Yeah. Cool. And well, Dad tells Abby that she can't see Troy anymore, so she storms off. Mom is way too loud for the microphone levels of angry. So she storms off. Dad <laughs> storms off. Everybody storms off. Then the movie's like, oh, fuck, we got to go with one of them, right? Yeah. So then we fuck. watch Dad watch Trump on TV. Right, right. And my note is they didn't even eat their stack of bread. That was their dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it was just all it was, was a little warm stack of bread was their dinner. <laughs> and as Dad is having his like, oh, I know I've been bad moment, the free music that Donald James Parker found <laughs> is uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that that track was probably called Entering the Ancient Chinese Village. Because he's like, <laughs> God, I know I need to bang, bong, bang, <laughs> bang, 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 <laughs> gong. Yeah, yeah gong. exactly. So he's flipping through channels and this TV preacher comes in and he's just like, the TV preacher's like, have you recently had a fight where everyone in the movie stormed off and you're the only one still in the room? Yep, yep. And he said, the preacher might as well say, welcome to my TV show where I read you a sermon written on my dick. Because all he does is he keeps looking down. Are you Gary? And have you, like, you're like, fuck, shut up. Yeah, so, and then he prays. He, he prays that he can be better in act three. Mm -hmm. And then he runs out to his car to, and drives off as though he's going to find Jesus. <laughs> I wrote, he's trying to escape the movie. Get him. Get him. <laughs> oh, I thought he just like put Jesus, like he typed Jesus into a Garmin. Oh, there or you something, go. Yeah, like exactly. an old GPS. <laughs> yeah. I guess I have to go find Jesus. I love the idea that an all powerful God would give a shit about fucking Gary and whether or not he like went to church in between being a piece of shit. Because like, of course he can still be a piece of shit. He just has to also go to church. Right. That's the only requirement. Mm -hmm. I love that. All powerful God, everybody. Yeah. Cares about Gary. All right. Well, believe it or not, this movie has an even crazier gear to go to and the clutch is already in. So we're going to take a quick break to let you prepare. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will you even be able to say Merry Christmas in Biden's America? 
what color of people smell different? Isn't it really the parents' fault those kids got locked in cages? Find out the answers to these questions, or at least these kinds of questions, when we return for the uh. wouldn't want to insult bat shit with my analogy conclusion of <laughs> hearts are Trump. Mr. Uh, Smitherson, do you have a moment? Uh, Sure, Troy. What's up? I wanted to ask you something. Uh, go ahead, Troy. You're a part of this family now. And <laughs> please, Troy, call me Jeff. Well, I'm glad you say that, Jeff, because I, I want to tell you that, well, you suck. Uh, I, I what now? Y you just suck. Uh, like, like super duper hard. You, you wanted to speak to me in private about the fact that I suck. Yeah, you're a bad dad. You're a bad husband. And even though you're my religion, you're not anywhere close en enough to my religion. So, yeah, you just, um, I guess... Your messages, you ju you just suck. I mean, you really suck as a as a person. Okay, Troy, thank you for your feedback, but I don't actually think it's and you're fat. I, I'm I'm fat. I'm fat. You're fat. Tiny penis, and your face is is like okay, I, Troy. It's like a Troy. I think you should probably go from my I'm house. I'm only now. telling you this because I love you. Because I you love me. Okay, well I appreciate that, Troy, but I don't think that this is an appropriate Which conversation. Which is why I bought fatty fatty bitch tits tiny dick .com and I redirected it to your Twitter. I'm sorry, you did what? And then I went on Yelp. I created a business with your name and I gave you a one star review. What? Why would you do that? You did? I sure did. You know what, Troy? I'm gonna go. I'm actually going to go. Hey, babe, what's the matter with my dad? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. And we're going to open up this time on I Shit You Not Antifa on the Prowl. Oh, <laughs> God. I just want to take a moment to say before we get to this. Good quality cameras should be harder to get. <laughs> like there should have been, we have that like we, same reason we need background checks for guns. By the way, we we lock up the fucking like razor blades if you want to get a replacement. You know, if you want to yeah, buy right. uh, spray paint or something, they lock it. This should the same. What should apply are you gonna do with this camera? To, yes, to the 4K <laughs> camera that was somehow acquired because like the video quality is good. The video quality, not yes. the, anything else. I'm just yeah. saying, like the picture is actually good. I want some questions like when you buy it mm -hmm. you know they should be like well give me show me a sample of what you're doing I yeah. need to, can I get a character witness statement like a <laughs> this that we can't allow this in Biden's America <laughs> oh <laughs> strangle porn yeah go enjoy your strangle uh, porn sorry uh, yeah Just, uh, oh, Donald sure, James yeah. Parker was in here earlier trying to buy Sudafed and a camera so we have to be careful about this kind of thing. <laughs> oh it's too easy to acquire these things it's too easy <laughs> So, yeah, so we see the Antifa crowd. This is the, the guys that we're talking about getting the Chinese guns to, to kill Christian bikers with earlier, along with Desmond's ex-girlfriend and a couple other characters. So they're just, you know, wandering through looking for some people to beat up. And they see Troy in his Donald Trump shirt. Yeah. And, and they're like, hey, man, turn that shirt inside out. To which Troy responds, I'm sorry, I have the right to wear it. To which the Antifa guy responds, we have the right to kick your head in. <laughs> to which Troy responds, no, actually, you don't. <laughs> no, actually, yeah, actually, actually. That's illegal. Explain, you don't That's have illegal. the right to. You, you are yeah. able to, but that doesn't, you're going to get in trouble for it later. Yeah, so they start beating him up. In this. Well, they <laughs> well, start shoving? Shoving and I'll doing. I'll be honest, I, I couldn't, my brain couldn't take this scene. I blacked <laughs> out. You're going to have to do it without. I just couldn't. I My heart stopped. It's so bad. It made the violence in West Side Story look like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like the Saw movies or something. I don't know. Like it just, it's so yeah, fucking, fucking stupid. You, If you could somehow just watch this scene, I would act, maybe we should illegally rip it and put it on YouTube. I don't know. It's just, right. it's just unbelievable. Right, just put some unison snapping into it or something like that. No, this oh. is a great fucking, no, it's amazing. So they start messing with him. An old guy comes and breaks it up. He's like, what's going on here? They're like, we're beating up a Trump supporter. He's like, oh, okay, we'll go right ahead. Go ahead, get him right in his fucking dick. <laughs> well, yeah, but isn't that the same guy who then is on the Trump side in a minute? Or No, no, that no, guy's that's wearing a different, different old vest. white guy. Guy. That was very oh. confusing to me too. Okay, <laughs> I, was, I genuinely thought like no, honestly, they use this. So it, it might be the same actor in a different shirt playing a different character. I can't say that. For it sure. might be. It might yeah. be. 
I have trouble telling old white guys apart from each other. Yeah, so they, they get into a fight, but then all of the characters come together and they end up like five on five. They have this moment where they face off like the airport scene in Captain America 3, right? Uh, but, <laughs> but half of them are Trump supporters. So it's Troy, who admittedly is human shaped and four fucking <laughs> rascal bound, morbidly <laughs> obese, big dog don't run t-shirt wearing uh. sloppy motherfucks. And look, it takes a lot for me to look at any human being and be like, you're a fat piece of shit. Okay. I found a mini marshmallow in my belly button this morning and I ate it. I'm aware of who I am, but I could kill everyone in this scene. <laughs> like it's the fucking one cut samurai movie. I've never been more sure of anything. Before my hat hits the ground. The Trumpers are out of breath from standing across from the non Trumpers. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> and sadly, ever so truly, more sad than I've ever been about anything in these movies, they don't fight. No, no. the Antifa guys wander off. I think they wrote in, the guy wrote in like action scene and also Troy, my, you know, homoerotic fantasy of a man probably is the writer's thinking. <laughs> yes, He's going to uh. do some fucking slick karate and just kick everyone's ass. And then they tried to film some of that and they're like, oh, we can't do this. We don't know, this gonna, we're gonna <laughs> we don't hurt, know we're... how and <gasps> physically no one is able to. So let's just not, pre let's pretend we kind of fight and then stop for no reason. Right. Yeah, and so, so Antifa wanders off and there's this great moment where oh, God, yeah. dad and mom, they turn to, so so Desmond and his parents, the the black preacher from earlier and and and, and yep, the wife yep. are there. And so Abby's parents turn to them and they're like, we would like to have you in our home, even though you're black. Come to our home. Oh, it's, it's, it's <laughs> that and I have the same note because it's even worse. He turns to him and he's like, Hey, we have a bunch of food at our house. As though, like, I guess you're black, so I assume you have some food insecurity. Like, we, we can we can help. I mean, you also, I imagine you're jobless. Um, fresh food, fresh vegetables. Yeah. You, you may have access to them for yes, the time that I, we allow you to have. We have a pantry. There's some canned bullshit in there that I'm I'm sure you know y your people would be okay with because um, you're hungry. It's honestly like that's the t it's the weirdest thing. It really is. But yeah, so all the victorious Trump warriors head to Abby's house for an impromptu dinner. I have to talk about <laughs> what dad says about his victory. Okay, it's their movie. I'm sorry I keep having to say this, but yep. it's their movie. In their movie, dad's like, yeah, I had to use the Vulcan neck pinch on that girl. To which mom is like, yeah, you fought that girl <laughs> real good, hun. Real good. It could be a guy. It's, yes, your, it's, it's fiction. It could have been two guys. <laughs> In Donald J. Parker's wildest dreams, the only person he could do damage to <laughs> is a woman. <laughs> <laughs> but only if he <laughs> snuck up from behind. Yeah, I don't there. I'm not sure why it happened. Is it that the girl was the only one physically capable of doing any sort of fake combat? So they <laughs> had to change it to be the girl. Or are they trying to go with the like Michelle Obama terrorist image? I think that's what they're Ooh. going yeah. for. With, I think like, you're terrorist exactly fist, right. Fist bump Michelle Obama character. I guess that's it. Yeah. Yeah. The wife's like, not since you used to beat me before you started going to church. <laughs> oh, have God. you taken on a woman so effectively? And then the black dad tells why they were in the mall. And I left. I left so hard. I had to pause the movie because he's like, Sean, how did you end up at the mall? And he's like, well, we were going to go to Red Robin. But then I thought, you know what? I would like some Chinese food. But we'd parked on the <laughs> other side of the mall. So we parked in the E-Lot. But you know how the E-Lot has that weird hill and the spots are kind of... He goes through this in this bullshit insane... So long. No reason explanation yeah. for an hour. It's an hour of this two-hour film. Just be like, oh, I needed to get a shirt in here. Just anything. Yeah, just right. do something it's that's five seconds. Uh, my, my iPhone. Or just... Don't have him ask. Uh, Why would you ask that? What were you doing in the mall? Isn't that more of a white person thing? Or yeah, what? like, am what? I not allowed to be here? <laughs> <laughs> uh. and, well, and of course, all of this naturally leads them to discuss who they're going to vote for in the upcoming election, and they just haven't decided. Yeah, and the, frequently through, throughout the film, 
They try to pull it, do the thing where it's like, well, if you're anti-Trump, it means you haven't researched him enough. Yes. They're always like, well, I, I guess I better just do my research. Find out what this uh, Mr. Trump you say. Yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> find out what, <laughs> what he's all about. It's like, no, there's no research. There's nothing that he's all about. You know what he's all about. Jesus. Well, and then, of course, dad has to have this conversation where he explains to the black preacher that white privilege isn't really the problem. It's rich privilege. Yeah. <laughs> to which black dad says, and I quote, yep, it's those rich people and his words, they're shyster lawyers. Ooh, you didn't see the anti-Semitism coming. <laughs> I expected better from the unexpected bar mitzvah people, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that wow. menorah fooled me. I yeah. thought they were sort of <laughs> Right, yes. Jesus Christ. And anyway, so the dad is like, oh, and by the way, would you guys like to see this crazy-ass video that my wife's parents sent us? <laughs> would we? A YouTube video, you say? Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> would you like to gather together and all watch a fucking insane person's YouTube channel together sitting on a couch like crazy people? Yes, we all will do that we right now. We sure would. God. Yeah. So they watch that same video that we watched at the beginning of the movie, the video that this movie opened on. They watch that again. Now, during this video, I have to point this out because it's so goddamn important. I love this. Desmond gets a phone call and has to wander off. We're going to come back to that, but only in such a way as to make it weirder and then never come back to it. And then never again. That's correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apologies. Sound guy here. <laughs> of course, we oh, get God! the sound of the TV. <laughs> recorded from a mic on the camera with all this fucking phase cancellations and shit is awful. You, you already, we know they know how to dub. We know yes, we already have right. proof of this. Just dub in the TV sound later. So, God, uh, uh. so what's happening here? They've got the X, Y mics and the audio is hitting them at different fucking times. I wrote in my notes in all caps. Wow. We're really torturing Thomas. Aren't we? This is yes, probably illegal. Yes. yes. <laughs> You know, it, it, it'll it'll help repair my relationship with Andrew a little bit. You know, you got to appreciate <laughs> what you have. It could always be right. worse in terms of sound quality, everybody. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, and and on TV, by the way, the video they're watching has Sid Roth cut into the middle of it and, and say something about like, wow, black people must be super special. That's why Satan influences them so much more than the whites, huh? Yep. God must have big plans for the black community if the devil wants to kill their babies through abortion. Yes. <laughs> yep. Oh. So, and then all, everybody leaves except for Desmond and his family. And then they have this weird fucking conversation where he's like, hey, man, who was that on the phone that you had to wander off? And he's like, they found my birth mother. Yeah. They found my birth mother. His long lost birth mother. And it turns out that I was a botched abortion. My mom tried to abort me and I survived. And that's my backstory. Yeah. The nurse rushed in at the last minute to save him. <laughs> yes. Because like they relied on an, a nurse, you know, like what an abortion is happening at the place that I work. I'm going to stop it, I guess. I don't know. And I just picture <laughs> her diving in front, in front of, of that hose. <laughs> <laughs> She's just sucking on her nipple or something like, guys, come on. Uh, this is this is the first we're all hearing of this. You yes. listeners know as much about this as we right. do. We have not set up that he was adopted <laughs> no. or anything. We, no. mm -mm. And we will never come back to it. No, it will never get revisited again. No, no. His dad basically says, look, we don't have time for this plot point. We, we're we way into Act 3 <laughs> and we just oh. ignore it from then on. I think that... <laughs> The mom and dad actors are genuinely confused. Like, they're like, are we not your... Sorry, what? Are we not your, <laughs> I thought we were supposed to be... And then it's just like, cut. Who are we <laughs> like, then? <laughs> so... Never come back to it. Are you trying to improvise your way into a different movie, Desmond? You can't do that. <laughs> oh, no, I guess I better join the football team and find out if I can make my... Like, Desmond, stop. Desmond, You're in this Desmond, movie. Desmond, they said they'd shoot your sister if we don't finish this movie. <laughs> right. they said exactly. She's trapped somewhere don't in the basement. We have to finish strip. the movie. Bring, 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 bring. Can't be in the movie no more. <laughs> All right, so meanwhile, that Jew bastard Mark Zuckerberg has taken down DJP's Jesus links from the Facebooks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> this scene just, this scene is something. This, this is, scene wow. is so fucking good because uh, here's the thing. Donald James Parker is bitching to his wife about how, like, 
I post all this profit stuff and people send me all this crazy fake news. Yes. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And we get to find out what is and isn't too crazy for this movie. Right. And there's no way you can. There's such an arbitrary line. (laughs) Yeah. You cannot predict what it is. It's impossible. You would never know. The things that they're like, oh, don't be like this, everybody. They do like this weird morality play in the middle of it. We're like, (laughs) can you believe people are saying that George Soros was a Nazi? Yeah, he was only 14 at the time. He couldn't have been. And you're like, okay, I guess they're trying to say that's too crazy. And then (laughs) they're like, and then the wife is like, so anyway, I've been reading about what the child pedophile rapists are doing in our government. Yes, <laughs> like, yes. What is that? The, and that's good. Is that sweat? <laughs> and they're like, okay, we endorse this. She's pitching out of the shadows. Yes. She's pitching yes. out of the shadows. The movie that we did on episode 259, folks. The QAnon video that we did yeah. on episode 259. And she warns us about the swearing. She's like, oh, well, I watched this. <laughs> I mean, his language is pretty salty, but yeah, you should check it out. Yeah. Link in the show notes. Slam that subscribe button, y'all. I, oh, I can't with this scene. Oh, and I just thinking, how fucking nuts do you have to be for this movie to distance itself from you? It's like the first, the first part of the scene is them talking about stuff that's too crazy. Yeah. And it's just like, my God, what is, what is the, and then in the same scene, it's like, well, the pedophiles are in control of the government. Let's grab <laughs> yes, our guns. Exactly. You're like, oh my God, what a fine line we're drawing yeah. here. Between what? Right, no, he's like, oh, you know, these people are saying that uh, Anthony Fauci was roommates with Bill Gates. And we're like, and we're against? Against. Okay, I don't, against that. I don't okay. know. <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't I know. know. Gun to my head. I don't know. I are they know. against that <laughs> a conspiracy theory? And also, by the way, quick note, somebody hit the fucking Zoom button. During this oh, scene. it was so good. Yeah, right Just at the very end of that randomly one. <laughs> in the middle of someone talking, yeah. quick Zoom in like your mom is trying to film Christmas in 1987. <laughs> like, it's just, oh. And I, we should point out, by the way, this scene exists for its own sake in the middle of the movie. It doesn't call back to anything that's happened before. It doesn't foreshadow anything that happens again. Right. It's just him cutting in to say, I wish people would stop making us seem stupid by saying Anthony Fauci was roommates with Bill Gates and that George Soros was a Nazi. Anyway, QAnon's real. Yep. We need to stick to the facts like what my prophet who learned (laughs) saxophone from Jesus when he died in the dentist chair said. (laughs) All right. So now it's we're at church and preacher dad, black preacher dad is going to preach about the gospel of Trump to the random and sh- ever shifting number of people in his church when we get these crowd shots. <laughs> mask, no mask guy from the uh, preacher yeah. scene. He's in this one. Yep. Masking and not masking alternatively. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. always wearing that same big ass bright orange shirt. Yeah, mm-hmm. pumpkin. Yeah, shirt. <laughs> He uses that quote from, I think it's Paul, where he's like, some preachers will only tickle the ears. And he's like, if you're only here to get your ears tickled, you're going to want to leave. And I really wanted a guy in a gimp suit with the ears cut out to just stand up and huffily yeah. walk out. Just say, I won't be kink shamed. <laughs> yeah. I want him to be like, if if you're only here to get your ears tickled, that's uh, back. Uh, go back toward right, the right. Left, you know, past, <laughs> past the bathroom and the water cooler. Right, yeah, it's no, right between the, the crematorium and the dildo mm-hmm. shop. They'll take the years over there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> we also get a little Shakespeare here. He's like, if I may say a famous quote, a rose, no matter what you name it, is good. <laughs> so- <laughs> also, I am Will. <laughs> <laughs> you probably said that too. Yeah, so the preacher explains that Christianity has coddled abortion for far too long, damn it, and it's time yeah, they take a stand yeah. against it. Finally, finally. And I love it, too, because they, they're they in their minds, they're like, he's finally talking about the sin of abortion, which wasn't really part of, the, I mean, is that part of the movie? I thought it was about Trump, but it... Nope, we have anyway, not whatever. mentioned it at all up to now. Yeah. yeah, and so what they make it out to be is that, like, some super huge abortion fans leave when he's, you know, there's... People who have like full body paint saying like, I love abortions. I come here for the pro-abortion content. <laughs> like, what? This preacher's against abortion. I'm out of here. 
taking my sign and leaving. Yeah. Well, and yeah, so we watch a bunch of like, I love to, as soon as he brings up abortion, we keep, we cut to like this, like blonde 35 year old woman, yeah. like the, like the movie's just looking at her all judgy. Abortion's bad. Susan. 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 Oh yeah. No, the, the, the <laughs> subtext of that sh shot is this girl has had 20 abortions. Yes, like, exactly. And so we get a couple of people walk out in the middle of his, you should vote for Trump sermon. And then afterwards we get the most aggressive goddamn slow clap. Right from Gary, the dad. <laughs> yep. I would like to talk about the young man in the front row who claps <laughs> up and down as opposed to horizontally. Oh, I didn't notice this. I didn't notice that. You, literally, it is worth an entire rewatch of this film. <laughs> <laughs> there is a young man who has obviously been forced into this movie who, instead of clapping side to side like a human, holds his hands perpendicular. Like crocodile style. <laughs> like he's doing crocodile baby shark? Style. And yes, yeah. and does Baby Shark as he's clapping for him. I watched it like a dozen times. It's the funniest thing ever. Uh, so, all right. So now we, we, we're we going to have another Pastors for Trump meeting, right? Yep. yep. So now we have to establish that Black Preacher now is on board with Trump and he's preaching the word of Trump as well now. Well, and so this is a terrorist cell. Like, I mean, really, the, we this is where we start to get shots of radicalization of a small group of people yep. who are going to take up arms. You expect that because the, the little fucking noodle old man who wrote this movie is, again, just talking for these pastors for some reason. I, he didn't bother to write in that part. Like, why are they listening to him? What does he have to do with anything? Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's just like, well, I am me. So I deserve to be heard. And I'm going to talk in this thing. And the way he's talking about violence and all this stuff, you expect him to lift his shirt and have a bomb vest under it. Like, you literally <laughs> no question of it. Follow me to the Capitol building, guys. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then Black Guy gets up to give his speech where he's like, I used to disagree with them and racism is bad, but they can't keep the pro-Trump message because he's like, anyways, people say, you know, the Antichrist life tell me what's in the gospel. Fuck illegal immigrants. Also, fuck Muslims. Fuck Muslims forever. They're going to blow us up. 9-11. My neighbor, Larry, he waters his lawn before six. You're not supposed to do that. He just goes down a fucking crazy, irrelevant rabbit hole. And what's funny is the whole time he's doing this, everybody starts nodding along, but like not when he's done with a point or there's any reason for it. They're just nodding along at points that make no sense. Yeah, is this the guy or one of them's like, what? How come when we do a racism, people call us racist? Yep. And they don't call Darwin and Margaret Sanger racist. Yes. I'm like, are they are they a lot? Are they currently? Why would I? <laughs> what churches? When you do a racism, I say that's a racism. Would I? Is Darwin doing some oh. racist thing? Why, why would that come up? I don't understand. This whole fucking sequence is amazing because it's just Donald James Parker having a lot of fun with the ability to filter his racist words through a black actor. Yeah. I oh. don't hear you criticizing Genghis Khan. <laughs> yeah. He was it, violent. I don't. What? <laughs> and another thing. How come our music is so fast? I don't have anything <laughs> against rap, but my niece told me to listen to Hamilton and it was just like flippity, jibbity, jibbity, jive. I couldn't understand any of it. I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> I am one. And then with amazing rapidity, we cut over to Desmond, <laughs> Troy, and Abby thinking about maybe oh how they should God. go campaign for Trump on campus. Right? We speed cut over to that. And I, there's this great moment here. The scene is hardly worth bringing up, except for the fact that Abby says, well, what I think we should do is target suburban moms, soccer moms. They're really going to make the difference in this election. And Troy's like, no, that's stupid. You're a girl. Shut up. And she's like, okay. Okay. And they do a different yep. thing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. She might as well be like, I don't know. And I think the state of Georgia is really important as well. Okay, soccer moms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the suburbs in Georgia are really going to matter. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> DeKalb County is like, oh, no, DeKalb County. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they shit all over her idea and ignore it. And then they head out to the college campus. Now, we, we have to point out, Desmond sure is afraid to go out there in Tennessee and campaign on behalf of Trump because all the yeah, people who yeah. get beat up doing that. 
And when we say campaign, by the way, here's their idea in their mind of what it means to campaign for someone. <laughs> it is yeah. to yeah, it is to stand on the quad and yell "woo woo Trump Pence" as people walk by. Yep. Ma- make sure you vote. Make, make that woo, changed vote. my mind. That you won me over <laughs> when you said Trump Pence in my quad. But like you just, you're so right that like she has a real idea of what might make a difference, and he's like. No, you idiot. Make me a sandwich. And also the youth vote might be like 5% or something something like that. So let's go to a college and like do nothing. It's it's so funny. (laughs) Again, it's their movie. Why do they do this? Why not go with her idea of like, yeah, you're right. We better, we better approach the soccer moms. Maybe that's somebody you could like actually convince. No, let's go to a college campus and just stand there in Trump paraphernalia (laughs) saying Trump Pence 2020. What is that going to do? Right. Exactly. But of course, they get accosted by one of those college SJWs who literally opens by yelling in their face, you're offending me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. There's also this amazing scene. He goes, where are your masks? She is wearing a mask yeah, and he exactly. is not. No, no, exactly. He can't be unmasked and do it. Yes. Yeah, so. I'm not sure how they fucked that one up, Eli. I don't know how they <laughs> fucked that one up. How? No. On the props table, the mask clearly said it was mine. And yeah, but the scene doesn't make sense. I ask you where your mask. The props lady said, <laughs> this is mine. I'm wearing it. Okay. I, what? The f- and then at one point, he's like, don't you know the only people who like Trump are farmers and hicks? To which Troy responds, yes. <laughs> well, so, yeah, well, you got a problem with hicks. Well, there's also a moment here where he's like, you know, there's a, but, you know, you're, the side you're supporting is a bunch of racists. And, and she, Abby, cuts in and says, oh, yeah, well, a lot of these so-called anti-racists are often harbor anti-white feelings <laughs> is what she says. What a response. Yeah. Which, some kind. which is followed up with racism isn't as bad as anti-racism. I just wrote my notes. <laughs> Fucking awesome movie. Fucking awesome. <laughs> well, and then he's like, and, and, and of course, since he can't compete with that awesome what about racism against whites point, he says, well, we should have open borders. Yeah. To which, of course, they they respond that immigrants are terrorists. They do send the rapists, though. Yeah. And this is where they do, he also just says, defund the police. Yeah. And then he's like, you know who defunded the police? The Nazis. The Nazis. Not <laughs> even joking. That's his answer. <laughs> See, the problem in Germany, I'm an expert in history, folks. What happened was the Nazi party defunded the police. And so when the Nazis rose to power. The police went to answer the 911 Nazi call. And then they're like, oh, where's my gun? I've been defunded. And then the Nazi police was like, I haven't been defunded. I have a gun. And then they won. That's history. That's exactly. But they won't teach you that in your liberal hippie school. Because they're trying to kill God. That's right. All right. So now it's time to wrap this fucker up. And they end this scene by essentially being like, is is this scene out? Are we yeah. done with this? All right. In their okay. own movie, they don't win. Yeah. He walks away and they're like, Trump, long pause. Yep, I know. Yeah, they just, they all walk in a different direction, like not knowing where the end of the scene is. Like, vote, vote Trump. Bye, bye I guess. But not before they all point out how useless that interaction was. Yeah, <laughs> the first correct thing said in this movie, the guy's like, I think we're not changing anyone's mind. <laughs> yes, exactly. Really? <laughs> no way so, standing in a college campus with your Trump bullshit shouting vote Trump <laughs> didn't change someone's mind wow weird so weird all right so now they're all we're all of the named characters and then some the the <laughs> so actually yeah. it's not because Donald James Parker and his wife that we started with we've forgotten all about them so it's Abby and her, her parents and Troy and Desmond and his parents They're all sitting around on the couch together watching the election returns come in, wondering how long it would take a Biden administration to start hunting the Christians down and having them compete in some form of Hunger Games. You're not joking. No, I'm not. 
Listener, this is not he. Ju- this is Noah was being the straight man of the scene. There. <laughs> yes, that's what they I say. Told, I was just setting it up. Yes, yes, yep. that's not a joke. They're there. It's election night. They're like, God. So, um, do you think we're gonna have to kill each other in a duel to the death in Biden's America? And they're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, there's a okay. Should 50, we pair up ahead shots. of time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> should we be training against lions or <laughs> yeah I, yeah do, how do we best get eaten by lions so like when they feed us to the lions do you go in <laughs> yeah. do you like to go feet first or head first i feel like if you I'm go thinking, head first it's over quickly yeah, right that's yeah get, like, get it, that's what i was thinking too but then, but if then you could, i don't if know you don't maybe get rescued, what if you don't if you're die gonna get rescued it would be too late then yeah. mm-hmm. so <laughs> that's the fucking scene that is the scene Idiot. and at a certain point they're like God, there's only like a few Christians left in this country too. You know, like they're like essentially like, I don't, yes, I don't, exactly. Not sure how many of us are left. <laughs> yep. God. And by the way, hey guys, if they try to shut our church down, should we have a violent revolution? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. They, no, they actually go out of their way to say like, well, when would it be time to rise up in arms against the government? Well, if they tried to shut our churches down over the pandemic, that would be a great reason to. Yep. Start a violent revolution. Yep. And then, and then, in perhaps the sweetest moment of the movie, mom turns to everyone and she goes, I'm just worried that when Trump wins, the liberals may storm the Capitol building. I don't know. (laughs) It's so close to that. Let's say they decide they want to steal a painting, right? And one of them, he's carrying a taser, which you're not allowed to have in the building. So he sticks it down his pants, his big, big fat pants. And then his thigh turns the taser on and he electrocutes himself in the balls till he dies. I bet that's that's what you sound like. I'm just worried that's going to happen to the left. That's... That's what's going to happen to the liberals. Yep. <laughs> it really is almost that. Like, it really fucking is. And by the way, they conclude this scene by going, and by the way, in advance, I am not crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people will call us crazy for thinking that. Right. Right. They're like, well, yep. Someday people will all agree that we're not crazy conspiracy theorists. Uh, oh. And what I love is the scene transition because we just get cut to a super fake fucking PowerPoint election map. <laughs> yes, yes. And you show them and they're sitting in the exact same positions in the same clothes. They've just been sitting there for 12 hours. Just all naturally like two in the couch, two in front yes, of the couch. Yeah, exactly. They didn't move. No, one's, no one's had to pee in the intervening <laughs> yeah, time. Nope. I love too, they've got the states colored in and they've got this voiceover going like, well, it looks like we won't know the results tonight. And what he says, because they because this is so stupid, because Donald James Parker wrote it, he says, well, the Republican states went to the Republicans and the Democratic states went to the Democrats. So (laughs) it'll be decided in the swing states this year. (laughs) Meanwhile, they have Florida as blue. Yep. Yes. If Florida were blue, the election is over, you fucking nitwit. Right, they oh, have Georgia. Well, we don't red know what's going to happen. <laughs> Georgia and Arizona. <laughs> yeah, Biden only currently sits at 577 uh, electoral <laughs> votes. So we're not going to know until the weekend. <laughs> right. <laughs> Idiot. Oh, this movie denied us so much. It's, I wanted the ending where these people lost and killed themselves like they <laughs> yeah. missed right before the good guy comes to save them from the sky box. I wanted them to tear their shirts and scream to the heavens. I wanted them to start dosing bleach out into fucking yeah. containers of Kool-Aid. I was owed this Donald James Parker. I made it through this whole movie. Dude. I thought that was where they were going. I thought they were going to say Biden won and they like kill themselves or something. I I don't know. Because then it's our favorite movie, right? We have to agree that if this movie (laughs) ends with just a mutual seppuku and a (laughs) bloodstained floor, I watch it every year at Christmas. (laughs) (laughs) Right, but so when it ends, they're all leaving, right? Because they have to leave on the cliffhanger. They don't know who's going to win. So they're they're all leaving and they're like, should we pray one more time? And she's like, yeah, sure, sure. Mom, why don't you lead us in prayer? So the mom character, she's going to close things out for us. And before she even says the first word, she's already in full-blown ugly cry. (laughs) Yeah. Well, we've kind of skipped over the fact that this poor woman is like a trauma victim. Like, and and in a real, I don't mean the actor. Like, I mean, she really is. Like, they've, they've played up the fact that, like, she never can decide anything because, you know, she's a fucking victim of abuse. Right. And, like, Then at the end of the movie, the feel-good moment is, hey, mom, why don't you lead the prayer? And she, like, 
physically crumbles at the idea of being in charge of anything. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. Like she can't even deal with it. Oh, this this actress fucking is so sure I'm going to pop out of her toilet and stab her. And you know what? She's right. I am. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so she's crying throughout. She thanks God for letting her be born American. <laughs> <laughs> And she says at one point in her prayer, I fucking quote, bring us to that place where when you are all we have, we realize you are all we need are the words. Oh, uh, what? Okay. Shoot for the stars, because even if you miss, you land among the moon. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, so it's all just bumper sticker bullshit delivered through snotty crying and then Troy asks Abby if she'd like to fuck right yeah pretty much well yeah. now that the election is over let's focus on our marriage yep yep the end the end the end because <laughs> he lost because he lost and Donald James Parker didn't get to get all his friends together to shoot their little scene. I hope he fucking made a cake. I bet he did. I bet he made a uh. shitty little Trump Pence cake and he just <laughs> ate it alone watching his YouTube video. <laughs> just refreshing, hoping to get those views up. I'll get it up higher than those god awful movie bastards just watching it over and over again, eating it with his hands in the dark. Where he shoots his if fucking If you watch movie. 51% of it, it counts as a view. <laughs> uh, uh, so, all right. So, but here, but that brings up my final question, though. Like, all right, as hard as this movie was to watch, and it's like top five hardest things that we've ever goddamn watched, it could have been top harder. One thing. Top well, for one. you. For you. No, yeah. For any human being. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, okay, but not in all theoretical worlds, because we could have had to watch this thing if Biden hadn't won. Oh. Uh, all right. No. Could you even fucking imagine? No. I genuinely would have said, fuck you, I'm not doing that. No. I, I would. And like, I wouldn't have known what the movie was. So I probably would have watched it for 23 seconds and then said, yeah. oh, never mind. <laughs> fuck you. We're not friends anymore. This way, I almost said that because of this movie. Was right. So bad. Anyway, this was yeah. very painful. But again, I just sat there. I'm like, we won Georgia. We won Georgia. We won Georgia. We won Georgia. It's so good. It's good. We could, it doesn't matter. These people, they don't have the, the same amount of power anymore. Yeah, they still have some power and they're going to be back in five seconds. But like for now, it's okay. Yeah. These people who think we're the Antifa Chinese Russian people are going to hunt the Christians <laughs> and feed the lines. They don't currently have quite as much power. It's okay, Thomas. It's okay. Yeah. If Biden hadn't won, this review would have been live streamed from the Capitol building. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Thomas, this wasn't enough to scare you off. So nothing is clearly. Yeah. Thank you so much for suffering alongside us. And just a quick reminder for our listeners that have very short memories. Uh, where can they find you if they want to hear more from you? Uh, opening arguments, doing such good stuff. You know, I've noticed an uptick in opening arguments. And I think so many people were like too depressed to listen to. Yeah. <laughs> and, yep. and like, honestly, like we, it's been so fun lately. It's good news episodes and it's good law. It's fantastic. Come check it out. The streak is port. Oh, the streak is port. <laughs> <laughs> check out Serious Inquiries Only, Philosophers in Space. And hey, if you're into uh, NES video games, been playing some NES video games on the original cartridges, twitch.tv slash series pod. And uh, you fine folks are going to come on my channel or I quit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You may at least owe you that. You owe me a blood debt. <laughs> <laughs> you will sit there and watch me try to beat Battletoads for seven months straight and never beat it. I like, feel you will be fair. there the whole time. That's it's an even deal. 100% fair. All right. Well, that's going to do it for a <laughs> review of Hearts or Trump. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still have a whole new presidential administration to work with next week. This is our last episode of the Trump administration. So, Eli, tell us Woo! what's on deck. Uh, I think we need a dose of a different kind of crazy. So we'll be covering the Wu documentary, The Healing Field. Okay. All right. No, I because I deserve to suffer more. So with that to look <laughs> forward to, we're going to bring episode 283 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Thomas Smith for hanging out with us today. And an even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptocrat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail 
gmail.com. Legal services with this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song is written and performed by Ryan Slot. David with Josh Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath and Wright and Eli Bosnick, I'm no illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Donald James Parker is already working on the sequel. You know he is. Sid Roth would go on to reenact punching a baby back to life on his television show. And Donald Trump fucking lost. <laughs> you lost, you piece of shit. So, he fucking lost. So baby. lost. He lost. Lost. He lost and he got so impeached again brutally. and he's sad and he's scared and his All shitty assistants bones. couldn't get him together a crowd uh-huh. for his inauguration, like a, my own birthday party with beer and hookers. <laughs> <laughs> he lost. He lost. Fatty, fatty, bitch, tits, tiny dick dot com. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.